Um, I'm Barbara Bogue, Chair of the uh, Friends of Holland Hills, and we're um, delighted to have the DRC here today. And I imagine we'll get more members as we come on. So the members that we're expecting are Blair Davenport, Jane Pearson, Harris Lokman Hakim, Robin Roberts, who's here on the screen, and Barbara Ward, the chair. Um, a few housekeeping items. You are being um, recorded. Uh, the presentation will be available in a week or so on the Friends website and on our YouTube channel. Friends website is www.friendsofhollandhills, all one word, dot org. Um, you can also find about, out about our 2023 winter series there. Uh, we're going to start with questions that people posed on the registration form, and you can add uh, as, as it goes along, as you think of more questions or you have questions, just add those to the chat on the side and we'll get to those as we can. Um, if, and I'm sure knowing Barbara that she will be following up on a lot of people after that. Uh, actually, I have a few things to say before we go into the questions. So yeah, let me just do one more thing that that's part of the Holland Hills Converse Fall 22 conversation series. We want to thank Barbara for organizing this. We want to thank Christine Hooks, who manages the YouTube. And that's it. Okay, it's all yours. Okay, and hi. Jane. Jane just came on. All right. Hi, my name is Barbara Ward, and I am the chair of the Design Review Committee. Um, the first thing I want to do is introduce those members of the committee that are here, or at least let people know who they are. The guidelines require that um, there'd be five members of the committee, and then at least three of those members should be architects or design professionals. The other two members um, are just ordinary homeowners. Um, in my view, we are uh, very lucky to have three exceptional architects who offer a lot of their uh, practical knowledge and uh, professional knowledge to many of the applicants. So our members are first Jane Pearson, who is a lay member or a non-architectural or design review member who lives on Mason Hill. And she offers lots of practical insight that sometimes gets lost. Uh, Blair Davenport is an architect who lives on Mason Hill and uh, also a mom, so she's very busy. Harris uh, Men Hakim is an architect who lives on Glasgow, and I expect him to be joining us shortly. Robin Roberts is an architect who lives on Rebecca, and I am a non-design person who and I live on Paul Spring. Um, but before we go any further down the road of guidelines and procedures, I want to stress that it's the DRC's goal in every instance of someone coming to us with a design to get that homeowner's project to the finish line. Very frankly, the DRC very rarely says absolutely not. Rather, it will search for ways to ensure that the homeowner gets the design that meets the homeowner's needs that that design adheres to the DRC guidelines and that it will stand you in good stead if you must seek the county's um, architectural review board and approval of your plans. You need to go to, you will need to go and get architectural review board approval if you need a building permit. Um, yeah. There is a, just, I see that we have many new people joining um, the community and also joining the, this chat this afternoon. So I'll just take a minute to explain why there is a design review committee. The design, DRC exists because there is a restrictive covenant that runs with all of our properties that states that nothing ex, um, affecting the external design of a property shall be built without the design committee's prior approval, indicating that the proposal is in harmony and conformity of external design within, um, with the existing structures in Holland Hills. 
Um, and if you want to read more about that, I suggest you take a look at the guidelines. Appendix A has a number of the covenants. We get a lot of questions about how the DRC functions and how to get your um, what what needs to be reviewed, how to get your project before the DRC. And if you come away with no other piece of information today, please read the design guidelines. The design guidelines, um, and make sure that your architect reads the design guidelines. The guidelines not only pro provide the design criteria, but they also describe very specifically what you must do in order to put your project before the design review committee. The guidelines are posted online at the Civic Association's website. Look under community resources. And the guidelines can also be found in the back of the Holland Hills Civic Association directory. Um, the DRC meets the third Wednesday of every month. And at least a week before the meeting, the DRC schedule is posted on the Civic Association's website under upcoming events. Um, that includes a list of the projects we will consider and a short description of each project. If you want to attend, we do these meetings by Zoom. We've been doing them by Zoom since the beginning of the pandemic. And very frankly, um, as far as we can tell, it's worked out very well. Um, it allows us to take as much time as we need if when we were meeting in the library, we would often be uh, stymied by the lack of time because you have to clear out of the library by nine o'clock. Um, so if you want to attend, even if it's not a project that you're involved in, contact the DRC and you will be sent a, a, a Zoom link a couple of days before the a meeting. What needs approval? The DRC reviews any change to any portion of the exterior of your house. You can do whatever you want to the interior of your house. If you want to make it one great big room, that's your business, do it. Um, and it's not up to the DRC to review that. We only look at the exterior of your house. Projects that do not change the external appearance of your property do not require review by the DRC. For example, if for some reason you need to replace the T111 board on your house and you're going to replace it with new T111 board, you don't need DRC approval. On the other hand, if you've decided that you're going to move from a um, gravel and tar roof to a roof with shingles, then you need to tell that come to the DRC for approval and you need to let us know what type of shingles and to give us a picture. Now I'll go more into that. There are also a number of projects that do not require DRC approval. Um, landscape fixtures, children's play sets, mailboxes, flagpoles, uh, landscape walls, 24 inches or, or less. I know somebody asked a question about that. Less than 24 inches, you don't have to come to the DRC. Uh, loose gravel and non-grouted stepping stone pathways, you don't need to come to the DRC. Um, now to the criteria that we use. Generally speaking, the DRC concentra concentrates its review on the defining features of a Goodman mid-century modern house. So we first thing we look at, does the project hug the land? Our houses do not sit like wedding cake toppers on the land. Rather, they're part of the land and they are close to it. Uh, many of the houses are built into the sides of hills and so forth. And we're looking for something that continues that basic element of design in, of our houses. The facade should be a simple one. 
employing Goodman squares and rectangles. The roof should be a low slope, flat or butterfly roof. Are you retaining the brick chimney? That, that's one of the defining features of our homes. Uh, what are the windows like? Floor to ceiling windows are favored. Um, there's been three some groupings of windows, which are sometimes called ribbon windows that we've also found acceptable. And we've also um, allowed some other smaller windows when it's a bathroom or something like that. Finally, how much does the project change or obscure the original Goodman design? Now that Holland Hills has become an historical overlay district, the ARB is very interested in not obscuring or obliterating the design of the original houses. Um, so if you come with something that is going to completely change the front facade of your house, uh, you're gonna have a problem with the ARB and we might as well tell you about it before you go there and meet a lot of obstacles. How do you get your project reviewed by the DRC? The, again, the guidelines describe the, um, all the procedures for getting your project before the DRC. Um, if you have a question after you've looked at the guidelines about how it works or what you need to do or what type of information you need to provide, feel free to come to us and send a question and ask. Better that you ask the question beforehand and are able to come to the meeting um, completely ready for the meeting and with enough information that we can look at. We need to see your information, your documentation of what you're going to do 10 days before the meeting. The reason for this is we actually review this stuff before the meeting. Many of the members will take a walk by the house, will drive by, and so they get a better feeling for the project and how it will affect other houses. Um, they look carefully at the designs that you provide before the meeting. So that's why we need 10 days. We also have an obligation to list what is going to be considered um, a week before the meeting on the Civic Association uh, website. Um, there are some projects that are small, a new roof, um, a new entry door for which administrative review is appropriate. Um, that means that we handle the matter between meetings. For smaller, uncomplicated additions, a new deck, a shed, uh, what we call standard review might be appropriate. Um, standard review requires only one meeting, but you must give the neighbors notif a notification and there is a copy of a, of a letter or an email which is attached to the guidelines that you should use to give notice to the uh, neighbors. And then you need to provide us with sufficient documentation to convey the full scope and details of your project. Finally, more complex projects, a large addition, a car, uh, carport, a second story, a porch requires expanded review. That means first bring the project to us for conceptual review. Um, and we will have somebody discuss what kind of information we need for conceptual review. After we've come to some kind of an agreement and you've received conceptual approval, then we move to final review. We're very aware that architects cost money and that this is costing you money to participate in these meetings. And we want to make sure that you're not spending a lot of money having construction drawings um, drawn up only to find out that there's some reason why the DRC has a problem. And then you have to go back to the drawing board on these construction drawings. Better that you come to us with a more generalized drawing um, 
and then we come to an agreement on what should be the final product and then you can go to the more expensive construction drawings. Um, actually, I'm going to ask Blair uh, Davenport to uh, discuss a little bit about how detailed the drawing should be when a homeowner submits a project for conceptual approval. Blair, unmute. Can you? Un okay, you're unmuted. Go ahead. I'm here. Hi, everyone. My name is Blair Davenport. I'm an architect um, and I've lived here since 2019. Um, as far as conceptual approval goes, what we really like to see are floor plans. Um, we don't get too much into the interiors, um, only to the extent in, to which the interiors affect the exterior. So, you know, it's helpful to know maybe where closets are and bathrooms. Um, things like that might help tell why you don't want a window in, you know, a specific location, or you want a clear story window, which is a window up high um, that allows in light, but um, but maintains privacy. Um, so floor plans are helpful in that regard. Um, but again, you know, we don't necessarily care, um, you know, what the flooring is. Um, unless of course it extends um, into the exterior. Thing is we like to see flat elevation drawings. So a flat drawing of each side of the house that shows where you would have your siding, where you would have windows. The size of the windows are important. So be prepared to tell us how wide the windows are, where any mullions, vertical mullions, horizontal mullions are located. Um, please indicate which windows are operable or not. Um, Please also indicate, you know, where doors are located and are the doors solid? Do they have glass? Um, things like that. And then 3D, um, 3D views are helpful for us to understand the size, the scale, um, orientation. Um, at the conceptual stage, it's not necessary to have renderings that cost a lot of money to produce, but as in as much as you can provide um, sample images of materials, um, that is also helpful. So again, you know, as Barbara was saying, you don't necessarily have to go, you know, to all of the final materials that you would have um, for final review, but giving us an indication of um, of what goes where and what things look like, um, those are are always helpful. Um, and again, materials, materials, materials. Um, even if you're not sure, even having um, ready some images of whether your roof is, uh, you plan to do a shingle roof or a tar and gravel roof. Um, those are all things you know we're going to ask you, um, even if you know we do, even if you don't have the construction drawings ready. Robin. Robin Roberts is also on the DRC. Thank you, Blair. And I'm going to get Robin to discuss what we want to see for final approval. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Robin Roberts, um, architect. I've been living in Holland Hill since uh, 2004 and um, have been involved with the DRC starting I guess midsummer, June or July was when I came on board. Um, I'm still learning the ropes, but um, I can certainly help with the uh, all aspects of of the Holland Hills House, the residential construction. Um, this the second uh, phase of our review is to take a look at the at the 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 final design and typically and this is in conjunction it works uh, in conjunction with Fairfax County's final review of the same so we review the project at conceptual um, Fairfax County reviews the project at conceptual and likewise for final Fairfax County is really looking for the as close to construction drawings, if not construction drawings, um, essentially ready to be permitted. Um, these are, you know, the very detailed 
uh, detailed drawings that a contractor is actually going to uh, build your project from. Um, and the, the the reason why the 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 review wants the reviewers want to see these drawings as we do is because um, when a project is underway and it's it's under construction, and things pop up that are not um, seem to be complying with the last uh, review by Fairfax County or by uh, the DRC, we have something to look at to say, well, we agreed on this, but it's not being built that way. Uh, uh, please explain. Um, the construction drawings, there's, I guess there are, uh, in a way, two sets of construction drawings. One that would be for the DRC to look at, and one be, would be for the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the county. The county is only going to review, they only want to see what is uh, permitted, uh, what requires a permit. There are uh, things that the DRC reviews that the county is not going to uh, review, like fences, um, uh, what are some of the other items? Sheds. Um, pardon? Sheds. Yeah, sheds, smaller sheds. So there's a few things that the DRC will only review. But still, when it comes to the final, we really need to see as detailed information as possible to, to make those final judgments. Um, and the drawings that uh, construction uh, contract drawings typically uh, include uh, elevations, which Blair discussed, uh, exterior flat panel drawings of, of the, uh, the exterior uh, surfaces of the house that are being uh, constructed, uh, floor plans in order to see the uh, relationship of the inside to the outside, uh, and uh, detailed drawings where we really want to see the details, section details um, of typically the exterior walls to see how the, uh, the windows and the doors conform to uh, uh, the Goodman design. And it's, and it's really critical at that uh, stage to be able to look at the details because the details really do matter. And Robin, what should a homeowner do if in the process of building, um, there's a need to make a change? Do they need to come back to the DRC? They would need to come back to the DRC if the, the change is affecting the um, exterior image of the house. Um, what we've agreed, what we had agreed to earlier, if there's a deviation from the from uh, those uh, documents, uh, the DRC would would uh, really need to see those. Um, the DRC would need to see them. And in some cases, uh, the county would need to see them because the county is is not only reviewing for constructability, but they are also reviewing for design intent and conformance to the HOD, the uh, uh, guidelines for following uh, Charles Goodman's design uh, or details. Uh, so the um, yeah, so we 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 would need to see it as the county would because if the county came out and saw that it was a, a deviation they could theoretically stop the project and say let's let's discuss this and see where we go you know what's the what's the path forward okay um jane you're the lay member of the committee what are the things that you're not looking at architectural designs and picking the, the architectural structural drawings nor am i and picking them apart what is it that you're looking at just looking at it from a neighbor perspective, um, sometimes I feel like people come in from outside the area 
they have sort of a vague idea of what they're getting into in terms of the process and um, their architect isn't from here. So there's just some basic things that you know are, are, are easy to see if you did and then you lived here for five years, you would regret. So trying to kind of point those things out. Also, um, I try to share resources um, because I've gone through two extensive reno renovations. I, I do sometimes have, you know, why don't you call this guy or, or something like that. The, the committee doesn't recommend architects, but I can as a neighbor say, I had somebody do this for me. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just happy to share the contact. Um, other than that, I just, you know, I try to, try to kind of make sure that it goes it goes with the neighborhood in the sense, not in an architectural sense, but in the other houses that have done similar things. Um, try to kind of point people to, hey, go to Elba and look at this house because they did, they did something that you're trying to do. That's about it. Uh, Jane said one thing that's really important. Sometimes the DRC gets emails and they'll say, please give us a list of recommended architects. We do not have a list of recommended architects. We don't recommend architects. Um, I've often written back to people and said, why don't you post that message on the forum and see what kind of responses you get or take a walk around the neighborhood. And if you see something that looks really good, go knock on the person's door. We are generally a friendly community and people will share with you um, who they've used or whom they've heard you should avoid at all co costs. Um, we don't tell people that they have to use a certain type of windows. Um, but um, again, we refer people, we can give you some advice as to types of windows that have been used in the past. Um, and it also um, suggests to people that they um, again, go to the forum, get some reviews, ask your neighbors. Harris um, has just come on to the, uh, I see him online, and I'd like Harris to talk about some of the new things that we're looking at, like solar panels and sheds. I know you've done, Harris has just done some work on sheds. So why don't you go, Harris? Hi, everyone. Uh, my apologies for being late. <clears throat> Harris is our architect who lives on Glasgow and is in the middle of his own renovation. So we yeah, should be kind. Yeah, it's, it's a construction zone right now. It's, uh, it's been very interesting condensing our life into a couple of rooms. Okay, so um, there's a few things I just wanted to share with the group. <clears throat> One of them is um, the, the fact that every two, two or three meetings that we've had, someone always wants to build a shed and a, a storage building out that's not connected to the main house, an ancillary building that um, whenever we get one of these uh, requests, we have to um, go through the whole process of looking at the design of the manufacturer, seeing what fits the site and uh, what matches the uh, design aesthetics of the neighborhood. So after having gone through that a couple of times, um, on the last go around a couple of a month ago, we thought we would uh, reach out to some of the manufacturers and have them come up with a design that matches what, um, what Holland Hills is all about. And that would mean um, a design that essentially the DRC would endorse. And it would be one of the f first choices that um, residents can go to and we would try not to limit it to one or two manufacturers so that it's not a monopoly but it's just a method to streamline the process so that um, residents have a place to go to for a couple of choices that fit the DRC and it would just reduce the um, paperwork and the approvals process and make that a little uh, more streamlined so that's something that we we have not totally kicked off yet, the, uh, the people on the DRC um, will be involved in vetting a design and um, coming across a, a, a criteria that will work for the, for Holland Hills. So that's one thing that we're thinking about for the storage sheds. And then the other things that I've been working on um, 
and this is in conjunction with the Holland Hills uh, Community Association um, and their technology committee. And one thing that in working with Barbara and the team, Blair and Robin and um, previously Paul, um, I was always at a loss in the beginning of the DRC about what was uh, happening with previous projects. So um, I was bu bugging Barbara a lot about what what was this project? Can you send me these drawings? And um, it occurred to me that there wasn't a repository of all the projects that had been approved or disapproved or any project that had been through the DRC committee. And um, uh, I thought it would be a good idea to have this archived and make it, uh, if the DRC committee agrees to make it searchable or public to the residents of Holland Hills. This would give everybody a, a a transparent view about what has gone through the pro um, design process and approvals process. And it would give sort of a guide about what you've seen um, built around you and how it got to be that way. And it, it's more of a tool that for this DRC committee and for future committee members so that we have a, a record of uh, what's happened. Um, and that's something that I'm working with uh, Steve Wabensky and his team because they have this big overarching um, technology mandate to um, get the CAHH onto um, a digital platform. So that's the second effort that I'm helping um, move along. And um, I was, I think there was the one question I had for you, Harris, was. Yes. What is our position on solar panels? We don't really have a solar panel position. There's only a scant couple of lines in the DRC guideline, guidelines about it. And it, it refers to making sure that the panels don't have a offending view to the neighbors. And so I thought that, um, if I'm not mistaken, there's maybe we're going through the third project with solar panels in our neighborhood. And the only comment I had about that was, that it's a great idea. I think it should be done in a smart way and a, not an, an offending way. But I thought it would be helpful if all the solar panel owners uh, start a database about what they spent on and what their capacity is and what the long-term benefits were so that it can be a database that all the other residents can tap into and say, hey, you, you've got the same roof I do. Maybe I should do this as well. Now, this would obviously be a voluntary uh, database for the homeowners to do, and they would feed into it every six months or so. So they could tell us, you know, for this season, we spent this much uh, in kilowatt hours from the grid, and we, we gained this much kilowatt hours from our panels itself, and we saved this much. So it's, it should be a good base of information that uh, our local community can tap into. And this is all depending on whether those homeowners, the solar panel owners want to share this data. But I thought there would be a plus. And this is something that we've not brought up with anyone else, but uh, is somewhat in the works. Thank you. Barbara Bo, do you want to ask some questions? I guess Barbara Bogus. Okay. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay. Do you have some <laughs> questions? Momentarily got confused. I want to. I want to say one thing that Jane said. I really want to second. I thought it was good. Is that we made some changes when we first made made in the neighborhood when we first came in, not fully appreciating where we were, that we would never have done five years later. And so, if you ever resent going into the DRC. It's, it's really a wonderful place to go and get recommendations and get feedback on what you're planning to do. And so, and that's one of them is that someone that someone who's neighborly on the on the DRC committee will tell you, you know, well, you really don't want to do that. You're going to regret it. <laughs> so we have uh, some questions. Um, did you want to, I'll pull this up. Um, so we had a, we've covered a lot of the questions. If anyone, if people want to come on now with their cameras and ask questions, we can take you one by one. Uh, we had one question. Um, we asked a question about operable windows, which Blair answered on the chat list. Um, she's, uh, 
we also had a question. I understand that several projects uh, after approval by the DRC have had their contractors deviate from the accepted plans. If this is so, how does the DRC respond? I think we've already answered that question. We, we, we want people to come to us. And in, in the instance that um, is being spoken to here, the people did not come to us. And we found out about it when we drove past the houses at some stage. I do not drive around the neighborhood checking up on people's plans, nor does any other member of the DRC, as we all have lives. Um, we expect people and people have to the very greatest extent um, honorably held to the plans. You make a contract when you get approval from the DRC that this is how you're gonna do it. Um, in those, in those two instances, we contacted the people. Um, in one instance, the people are making a change. I mean, sometimes the, it's done and you, you then have to figure out how to, you know, sort of cut your losses. And we also inform the Civic Association and it's up to the Civic Association really to decide what, if anything, they're going to do about it. Um, nothing has been terribly egregious um, but, uh, you know, we just have to, and there have been some problems that have been the result of supply chain issues where people wanted to do something and um, just simply could not get the product that they needed in order to make um, the design that they had discussed with us. So the only problem we would have was that they didn't come back to us. Um, but supply chain issues have affected a lot of people and I think a lot of projects in the neighborhood. We have another question on carports. So what is the, what is the general expectation in terms of design and um, in terms of developing carports? One of our architects want to answer this question? Blair? No. What? Sure. <clears throat> um, basically, what we're looking for in the in a carport is um, a, a few things. One, to make sure you know the design is um, in keeping with Holland Hills, so the um, sort of like a mid-century feel, and that can come in, you know, in in different forms. But you know, it should should look like it belongs, you know, to the house and to the neighborhood. Um, we often look at where it is on the site. Um, and you know we we take a lot of stock um, in where the carport is in relation to the neighbors, um, and um, we also pay a lot of attention to um, the roof line, especially um, as it relates in scale to to the adjacent house, and um, and again just making sure it's it's harmonious. Um, I'll let my other colleagues speak more to it. Can I just add in, although I'm not an architect, the thing that I often look at is the posts that are holding up the, the roof. Um, they should not be Grecian or have a lot of ornamentation to them. Straight lines, um, drive around the neighborhood, take a look at um, the various carports. And I think you'll see very quickly which ones fit in really well with the neighborhood and um, which ones could be better, let's say. So um, I think that will help to guide you in what, whatever you wanna do. Or, and, and again, come to the DRC with a proposed drawing and we can help you get to the finish line of something that would that we'll find acceptable. Um, that's a really important thing. I, I'd okay. like just to add, add to that, um, what you have in the DRC is just a good free opinion that might make your project a lot better. I mean, we you have architects who are involved in this um, on a monthly basis. So I think you should, if anybody's considering a carport or a garage, just tap into us with an early, um, early um, design and we can give you some good advice. We have another no, question. No, can, before we go on, can I just tell people, um, a few months ago, there was a project in Holland Hills 
um, that had to do with an accessory building. And we went on a, um, the three architects went on a, a Wednesday night and they must have been there for an hour and a half working with the homeowner on a design that would work. And I, it, it came to a really good result. People put a lot of work into this. Um, we freak the, um, the architects and Jane and I frequently if asked, or we will ask, can we come and look at the site? Can we see where this is gonna be? Can we um, take a walk around? And there's been some other projects where one architect was not aware that he was building on marine clay, which really affects what you're going to build. So there is, as Harris noted, a lot of free advice um, that this, you and your architect can get. You could pay for this consulting and, and here you're getting it because you have neighbors that are, are interested in preserving the neighborhood. So here's here's a good one because I it, it's not my question, but I could have asked it. I plan to Pave my driveway. I assume this doesn't need DRC approval. But my question is: Is are you asking for more? Uh, this says paving. Are you asking for more ecologically um, friendly type designs on driveways, or is it just something you're not concerned with? There's nothing in the guidelines that say uh, that require ecologically uh, friendly design. Um, and, um, but if you're switching, if you're going to go to concrete, we want to know what, uh, we're interested to know what color, because um, a bright white concrete really doesn't look very good. Um, if you're black topping or re-black topping, that's not something that the design review committee, if you're keeping what you have and you're just having it redone or doing maintenance work on it, that is not something for that the design review committee will get involved in. If you're making a change to what's there, then you need to come to what to the DRC. A good example of this um, is with decks. Your deck, it, it's not it's not a building, but it is a piece. It's part of the architecture. It's also part of the landscape. So that is something that you know we do need to see and um that's another area where like a carport um you know we can give a lot of um helpful direction and you know as jane was saying you know she especially can point you to oh you, you should go look at this house on you know glasgow because they have a deck that is similar to what you're doing so you know check it out um decks yeah are very important um very important for us to see and there, there, there's no restriction on the number of times you want you could come back to the for conceptual review, if you're not in a hurry, to come in with a, a, in a sense, a back of the napkin idea, as long as there's enough information uh, to follow it. Say photographs of the house, photographs of the elevation that you're going to be working on and to have a few uh, schematic ideas just to say, well, does it make sense for me to put the carport here or on the other side? And so we can give some, some uh, idea direction uh, very simply, very quickly, and then you can come back the next month with it a little bit more developed rather than getting too far down the pike and uh, not totally sure with uh, uh, how the concept actually works. So that um, I, I will, um, a, about a year ago, somebody was putting an addition on their house and their architect brought us a number of schematics of, the roof, of possible roof lines and said, here's what we're considering. Uh, we have roof line A, we have roof line B. Somebody also did the same thing with a carport very recently. Um, what do you think? Um, we can live with either one. What is the DRC like? And sometimes this is um, helpful for when you go before the architectural review board. Barbara? Both uh, okay, yeah, there is there is a follow up on the driveway. So they're asking if they're going to go from gravel to blacktop, do they need to bring that to you all? Yes. 
Yes, so the, the that answer is that. That would typically be handled administratively, right. I would say. Okay. Some, some people may have missed the fact that you can actually do some of these without going to the meetings. You can do it through email. And so that doesn't, right. yeah. The only thing I ask is, is if you send us an email that says, I'm going to be, I've decided, we've decided to change our roof and we're going to put shingles on. The design review committee needs to see a picture of the shingles because we, we need to see what we're approving, what we're agreeing to. Um, and perhaps that's the lawyer in me. You, essentially, we're making a contract with you. We want to know what the terms of the contract are. So we want to see it. Um, Blacktop, if you just tell us that you're doing it, it will be helpful. Um, right. Somebody on Glasgow, by the way, just did a concrete driveway which has which is interspersed with planting small plants and growth um which is pretty neat i think so if anybody's trying looking for ideas uh, you might take a drive past that on glasgow if the if the uh, driveway um uh, geometry the configuration is changing we definitely want to see that so if it's going from gravel to asphalt, um, and it's the same configuration, probably less of an issue. But if they are, if you're expanding the amount of surface area uh, going to to um, uh, asphalt, that would that would need to be seen. Hey, we have another question, which is pretty interesting. Um, how's it been going on the interaction between the uh, the ARB and the DRC? with the new H -O H -O -T. <laughs> um, And maybe we should describe the DRC is the Holland Hills Design Review Committee. The ARB is the County Architectural Review Board, which is part of the historic overlay district. Yeah. I, I'll start off by saying that the county made it very clear to us that they were not enforcing our um, covenant and that it was our job to enforce the covenant. They have other things that they are looking for. So that's why the DRC continues to exist. Um, we, I, th I think that it's, it's sort of a, we haven't had many problems yet. I think that people have come to us first for conceptual review and then have gone to the county. If you need a building permit, it's probably a pretty big project. Um, if you come to us first uh, for conceptual review, we can give you a pretty good idea of um, what you need to be doing. I, can, I don't think we've had any instance, and I always listen in on the meetings and have commented sometimes um, that, um, I can't think of any instance where we have said to somebody, we think you should do X, Y, Z, and they've gone to the county and the ARB has said, oh, no, do not under any circumstances do that. Um, we're not going, uh, uh, we're not going to give you advice that the county is going to find horrific. Um, so I think on that level, it's going well. I'm interested to hear from homeowners how they're finding the process. Um, because we want to rethink or think about what our role should be with the ARB. So if people have um, ideas about that or have had experiences, we're keen to hear from them. I know Robin Roberts, you went through both procedures. What did you think? Um, they were both great. I mean, I, I we, we worked out, I think, a lot of the 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 issues. So, and I'm very much uh, in love with Holland Hills. So, we weren't really trying to do anything uh, too 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 far out there. But uh, the process with both the DRC and I had to, of course, recuse myself. I think I I started. I was uh, brought onto the DRC on a Monday, and I had to present our project on Wednesday. So I had to recuse myself. But um, uh, also with the county, it was a, 
it was it was a it was a good process and and and, and helpful suggestions that we did make uh, in a few cases. Uh, so um, I'm all for it. They have a couple, the, the ARB has a couple of architects on its committee as well. So you're getting lots of free architectural advice. And historians. So we look forward to people's comments on how they're doing with the ARB and um, Barbara, any more questions? We have just a couple more uh, simple ones. What, what about um, ramps and uh, railings? And also, what about um, rules concerning building a patio and retaining wall? I know those are different things, but they're all kind of, yeah. So how would that? Someone came to us last Friday night, a week ago Friday, and said, uh, we need to put in hand railings so that we can um, be a little bit safer going in and out of our house. We had it approved by Sunday morning. And... Um, are there any guidelines that you all have or any suggestions you have when people are thinking of doing this? With the ramp, we're going to be, if you need a ramp, we're really going to um, let you tell us what you need. And um, unless it's um, really undesirable or it's not going to work for some reason that one of our architects can immediately see, uh, we're going to work very quickly to um, approve or review it and get back an answer almost as fast as we possibly can. Do the um, architects have any more input on that or? I'll, I'll just mention that the, ra the railings and the ramps are very specific in the eyes of Fairfax County. And um, that, that would be a good place to start because they have um, exacting requirements for posts and mountings and connections. So starting there is a good good point. And then we uh, tend to look at the aesthetics of the, the rail in relationship to the house. And by that, you mean you, that you would go to the rules and regs on the Fairfax County website or would yes. you go, you're not Constant. taking the ARB, but you're looking and seeing what the requirements right. are? Okay. Because regardless, we won't do anything that um, counters the Fairfax County regulations. But then details that would augment or complement uh, Holland Hills uh, design, I, you know, uh, strictures. Yes. And we're trying to, we're trying to make it, make the, the uh, end product still work well with, with uh, Goodman's design. Uh, you'd also mentioned the, the patios and- And retaining wall. Retaining wall. Retaining walls, I believe if it's, um, below 24 inches, right. then it's not, we don't need to see them, but if it's greater than 24 inches, yes. Patios, if it's, uh, um, I guess it's steps. If steps are grouted, then we need to see steps. So if it's like a garden set of garden steps, if it's just garden steps, um uh installed on a on a rock base on a gravel base that we don't need to see that but if you start to require uh grouting for structural reasons we would need to see we would need to see that okay. i don't know if the person saying patio meant um porch you know some us non-architects throw these terms around in um well, I know the difference, Barbara. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would think it was a, a patio. Patio would yeah. be a hardscaped uh, surface. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Live and learn. We know each other very well. Yeah, so uh, we've had one. I think we can close out with this one last question. And I'm not sure. I think it's, I think that the person is asking, uh, do we put like a DRC approval sign on new construction so people know it's been approved? You know, Barbara, I, I let me start off with this because I was reading the DRC guidelines a, a month ago, and there actually is a clause that the owner has to show a sign that the DRC provides that it is an approved design. 
And I've not mentioned this to the It's there. Team. And um, yeah. in the 20 years that it's been there, um, at least 20 years that it's been there, I don't think one sign has um, been put out. It's yeah. you know a matter of getting the signs made, distributing the signs. We are a volunteer organization. And if somebody wants to step up to the plate and uh, put the sign and get the signs together, uh, we welcome your help. But um, I think it's we just, just entered the committee meeting here. Yeah. I, I don't want to seem like we're a bunch of slackers, but you know, there's only so much that volunteers can do at this point. If you ever have a question, email me. Somebody did have a question about a project um that not too long ago and uh, you know i e emailed them back in 20 minutes and said yes this was approved on xyz date they said thank you and we're happy so feel free to ask does anyone else have any other questions before we close out well i want to thank our anonymous um, viewers <laughs> which is a little eerie but yes, thank you is. for all of you who are out there and thank the panel. This has been really wonderful. We'll get this up on the website. And if you have additional questions, send them to Barbara. You can send them on to the Friends of Holland Hills and we'll make sure they get them. And uh, we thank you all very much for coming. Uh, yeah, we, just let me reiterate. We, we're here to answer your questions and to get you to the finish line. So please ask us. Do not hesitate to ask. Thank you. Anyone else have any parting words from the panel? We're good. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. Thank Good night. You. Good night. Good night.